So hi, this is Tom Quimby, Senior Editor, Commercial Carrier Journal, and we are here today, Long Beach at the Convention Center 2022 Act Expo. It's Advanced Clean Transportation Expo. This is the biggest one yet. All right, so we've got 43 trucks and vans. Now, they're not all here in the ride and drive, right? So most of them are actually inside the Convention Center. We've got 16 trucks and vans here today. All right, so mostly electric. We've got some fuel cell in the mix and some other all fuel. What we want to do today, though, is we want to talk to some fleet guys and find out exactly what their impressions are of the vehicles. A lot of horsepower is what the feel was. It was really nice, smooth, very smooth. So that was the Nikola Bev, the uh, fully battery electric. I think the battery range is what they're, they're talking to the mileage of a roughly 350 miles. Comes in perfect for what we're looking for. We run routes anywhere 150 to 200 miles a day. Have a fleet of about 75 trucks, ranging anywhere from non-CDL right up to uh, class eight tractor trailers, delivering beer, wine, and liquor throughout the state of Maine. Talking with the driver, he was mentioning about the different components that we could actually have replaced locally. So it's not as specialty as one would think. So it was kind of nice to be, to be able to think that even out in Maine where there's, you're not gonna find them as very common, but you'll have the ability to have parts and, and, and repairs done. That was my first uh, ride in ride drop vehicle. Oh, it looks like a Cadillac for me because, you know, I drive a Tesla and I felt that, you know, there was no difference between Tesla and uh, this vehicle. So it was very smooth, very good acceleration, very silent and also very good comfortable ride that I had. So it really uh, helped me to get a perception of, you know, how good this can be for a driver and how comfortable it can be and how can they make this more efficient for their function. First uh, vehicle I had a chance was the uh, the Nikola fuel cell. That was the first fuel cell vehicle, class eight. I've had an opportunity to uh, ride in. Extremely smooth, beautiful ride, very quiet. That always kind of takes you uh, takes you by surprise. You know, all you hear is the wind. Really impressive acceleration. And I also had an opportunity to drive uh, Workhorse, their uh, 750 uh, box truck. I've driven their, their prior C1000 a few times, so it was good to see the comparison. It's a really nice ride, again, very smooth, good acceleration, and it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful vehicle. A lot of the projects I'm working on uh, specifically are with uh, electric vehicles and zero emission vehicles. There's uh, obviously a use case for, uh, for many different vehicles within, uh, within FedEx. What we're working with on the ground side is a lot of the class four through class six vehicles. Um, I think that's a perfect application for electric vehicles and, uh, and the commercial battery side. So I actually just went on a ride with Hylion on, with natural gas truck that was pretty cool. Like regenerating power in the vehicle is pretty interesting. So we're looking at that as a potential pilot. We've been talking with Hyzon for a little while. So I, I think for us, it's just making sure that we understand all the technologies that are out there and all the fuels that are out there so we can do micro tests and make sure we're participating and those that actually have you know the best cost benefit analysis will be the ones that we'll likely partner with and invest in but we're still in that discovery phase of figuring out which ones are the best the total cost of ownership is a big key component but we're really at the kind of beginning stage not necessarily of what we might do at the end stage of the equipment so we are looking at the full life cycle of the equipment but we haven't necessarily determined downstream what it might look like to retire those vehicles or repurpose them reuse some of that some of the battery life we're open to everything at this point so we'll look at those kind of smaller route you know, under 150 mile type dedicated fleet scenarios. And then we'll also look at over the road where we can hit 500,000 mile scenarios as well. Today I had the opportunity to drive the uh, hydrogen power class A truck. Uh, is uh, based on the e Cascadia frame. They just changed the technology from an EV to a hydrogen fuel cell. The response on the acceleration is like an electric vehicle. It will give us around 300 miles per uh, charge, so it's, it's exactly what we need. Very impressed with the technology so far. The only thing, the only concern I have is just having access to the uh, infrastructure to recharge those vehicles based on hydrogen. To produce hydrogen, you can you can go on the gray side, which is by using uh, natural gas. That's what they call gray hydrogen. Or you can go on the green side, that's by using uh, like solar or wind. 
uh, renewable electricity, and that will be green hydrogen. The problem with that is if you go in the gray side, then your emissions would be equivalent to having an, a diesel vehicle. Uh, so that's why we have to be careful with the technology, make sure that we are not just transferring from one technology to another one and we're not reducing emissions. That's why we feel initially we're probably going to invest on electric vehicles and then we go or we follow the evolution of the hydrogen technology and see how that goes. The Freightliner EM2, I got a chance to go for a ride around the parking lot. A little bit of a traffic jam, a lot of excitement, a lot of people out here, a lot of vehicles. Um, also checked out the Bright Drop. I think the overall feedback from everyone has been very, very positive. I think everyone's excited to get their hands on them. You know, we're looking across the range. We're looking at the electric vehicles. We're looking at the alternate fuel vehicles. We're looking at hydrogen. It's, it's really working with our customers and understanding what is their specific need so that we can bring the right vehicle offering. So we're not singling out any one of those technologies. We, want, we really want to have a holistic offering, a holistic solution for all of our customers. And infrastructure is a big solution that we have to put together for them, both from a charging perspective, building out the network across the country, as well as hydrogen, making sure that it's not just the vehicle, but really trying to educate our customers on looking at the holistic needs and make sure they have their fueling and charging plans in place. And sometimes that takes time. Sometimes that's a 12, 18, 24 month plan. You know, working with the utilities, obviously, it's, it's part of the planning. It's not just the infrastructure and the hardware itself, but working with your utility companies, not just to think about today, but future-proof your needs. And what do you need to do from a power supply perspective into your operations? And how do you put those plans in place to make sure you build out the appropriate infrastructure? I drove the Freightliner Gen 2 eCascadia that is in production now, which we have 30 of them on order. My team drove some, some other trucks that we don't have or haven't driven before. We drove the Hyundai fuel cell. The truck is pretty incredible ride with all the different air suspensions on it and the, uh, the turning radius with a rear axle that actually is a steering axle. So the, the advantages are the trucks are awesome. Less maintenance, the drivers love them. Quiet ride, they don't smell like diesel at the end of the day. Challenges are still as battery technology progresses. It's getting a little bit better, but the age old story of range and cost always come into play. Charging infrastructure as, as well. The challenges with infrastructure, we're kind of tackling head on because we have a dedicated fleet that's going out and back to the ports from the Inland Empire, to the ports of LA and Long Beach, and back to the Inland Empire. So we can, we can charge on our own property. So we're building the largest heavy duty truck charging site in North America is in under construction right now, where we're building in Ontario, California. So we're kind of hitting the, the infrastructure right in the mouth to tackle it ourselves. We have 19 350 kilowatt high speed charging cabinets with two dispensers on each. We're putting a megawatt of solar on our warehouse building there and five megawatt hours of battery storage. We are thinking about battery life cycle management. We're putting the battery storage in right now, right off the bat with new batteries. And at some point at the end of battery life in the tractors, we are hoping to use them for second life of battery storage and maybe add on to what we have. A lot of these trucks and vans are really amazing, just uh, how far they've come. It looks like the future here today. My understanding is that the battery electric vehicles, although I think they're great, for example, on the school bus, uh, a postal vehicle, any kind of a commercial vehicle, it's going to be plugged in, used, you know, plugged back in again and used again, you know, on short routes. I, I think that's a fantastic application for that. But I think fuel cell technology is probably the future, which is essentially still a battery vehicle but the range on it's going to be quite a bit higher. Of course, the challenge with that is, is there's not a lot of hydrogen stations where people are now, but, you know, remember one day we didn't have gas stations across America either, you know, that evolved over time as well. So we'll, we'll get there someday. For more information, go to ccjdigital.com.